Hello, party people. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you at least seven dinner recipes and dinner ideas. There may be more than that. You guys know how it goes. But I know we're all at home, maybe cooking dinner more. I have some really simple, delicious recipes to share with you. Uh, Let me know if you eat dinner every night. (laughs) Let me know if you make dinner every night and what you've been making lately. I have been really enjoying grabbing new recipes and trying them out. So the first one we're going to try is this sheet pan meatloaf and green beans. You guys know I'm a big fan of green beans and we're also doing some sweet potatoes as well. So you need two eggs, um, a quarter cup of ketchup. You guys know I don't really measure. I'm pouring in a half a cup of breadcrumbs and then one cup of quick oats. Hey, you see what I did with that onion? So fancy. One diced onion and two, one and a half pounds of ground beef. You can use turkey if you want. And um, I just threw in, I had this meatloaf seasoning, so I threw in a packet of that. This recipe also called for one can of tomato soup. I had some tomato soup, but it was like, I don't know, like basil, some kind of, I didn't enjoy it. I put like a quarter of the can in there in the meatloaf, and then you're supposed to top it with the tomato soup, but I just substituted ketchup for that, and it turned out fantastical. I'll share that with you. Um, I will also share all the links to the recipes down below. Man, I tell you, cooking with one hand. It's a special skill, okay? It's a learned skill that you learn when you become a parent (laughs) and realize you have to figure out how to do everything with one hand. Okay, well, or that, or you can listen to a baby cry while you do everything, and I would rather do everything one-handed. Anyway, I'm making mini meatloafs. Not only are they faster to cook in the oven, they're cute. So for the topping, I'm grabbing two tablespoons Worcestershire sauce, exactly, one, two tablespoons of brown sugar, exactly, and the other half of the can of tomato soup, but I just did some ketchup. You know, guys, my measuring, it's your kitchen, you do what you want, and everything will turn out just fine. I'm dabbing the topping mixture, I don't even know what to call this. Normally, I top my meatloaf with breadcrumbs. Little did I know, I was drawing the crap out of it, and <laughs> I had it like this for the first time, You know what else would be good on this? What's that red currant? Oh my heavens. You go ahead and top it with that. Top it with anything. Maybe you have some jam in your fridge that you're trying to get rid of during this quarantine time. Uh, So there's the meatloaf. I served it with just some sweet potatoes and green beans. With my green beans, I just tossed them in the oven. Oil, salt and pepper. You guys know that's my trifecta. In my mouth. This dish was delicious. Even though it's meatloaf, why does meatloaf get a bad rap? Okay, moving on, I made this crock pot Mississippi chicken mud, whatever it's called, and I talk you through it a little bit here. I'm gonna throw this in my crock pot for now, and it will be later when it's ready. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying, it's still so early. So, we, you just need a packet of au juice gravy. You can also use like a French onion soup mix, if that's what you have or that's what you wanna use. Also, some pepperoncinis, a stick of butter, I have made this recipe with half a, you know, a quarter cup of butter, just four tablespoons. Um, So if that's an option too. And then some ranch dressing seasoning. You can also buy this in a packet. Okay, so I have this massive roast. And if you wanna be extra fancy, you can sear it. Mine is frozen, it's a solid frozen, which I'm sure I could still sear it on the outsides. Am I going to? No, have you met me? I am not that gourmet. But if you do choose to do that, it would lock in the juices. You know, every time I've had this, the meat falls apart anyway. So I don't, I don't know. You do what you want, okay? It's probably better if you mix these ingredients in a bowl beforehand. I can't find my tablespoon measure, so I'm just gonna use a soup spoon and call that two tablespoons. (laughs) Just do that. You know what? That's how much I'm putting in. You know what I was surprised to see empty on the supermarket shelves? These, pepperoncinis. I had to buy this huge jar, all the small jars were gone. So you can add, um, I don't know, I'm just gonna add like six of these. Oh my gosh, my mouth is watering just smelling this. Have you guys ever eaten, or am I the only crazy one? I used to eat banana peppers like from the jar. I remember I would have sleepovers with my friends, maybe add a little juice if you want to. 
I would have sleepovers with my friends and I just vividly remember us sneaking into the kitchen, grabbing the jar of banana peppers and like gobbling them. I've been weird my whole life is what I'm trying to tell you. And then a stick of butter just right on top. You see that, that stick of butter? That is what makes this extra delicious and extra artery clogging. So we're gonna let that go. Oh, I can't wait for dinner and it'll be lunch for the next day and maybe the next day after that because that is a honking piece of meat in there. And after a few hours in the crock pot, mine was frozen. I think I put it on low for a really long time. Uh, it looks like this, what it looks like. Look at all those juices going, delicious. I'm sure you can also make this in the instant pot, but when you start out, throw some water in there, obviously, so it doesn't burn. And there's dinner, mashed potatoes, some broccoli, cauliflower, nice and nutritious. Moving on to one pan baked Parmesan chicken and vegetables. It's super simple. Really for the chicken, you only need a couple of ingredients, which is why this recipe was so alluring to me. Oh, hi, Meredith. What's up, girl? She's normally on the floor when I'm cooking dinner. So I'm peeling carrots. Sometimes I peel them. Sometimes I wash them. Depends on what mood I'm in. Today I was in the mood of, I don't feel like tasting dirt. So <laughs> I peeled them. I even, when I scrub them really well, I still get a, it's like a weird flavor. Anyway, I'm cutting them into strips. I'm julienning them. I'm, I, pretty much the next Julia Child over here. A boon a petite. So <laughs> it's probably not even a julienne. Terrible. Just cut them into little strips like that. Um, oh, this isn't even the chicken recipe. I'm just prepping my veggies. You can have any veggies you want. If you like, if you don't like carrots, don't eat carrots. If you like Brussels sprouts, I mean really any vegetable you like, guys. Really, It's just a vegetable and a starch, and I put my trifecta on them. Oh, and I'm adding green beans. Look how fancy we are with the double veg, really triple veg. Potatoes are a veg or a starch? I'm gonna say both, comes from the ground. Um, okay, vegetable oil, just kidding. That's olive oil, salt and pepper. I just zhuzh it up with my hands. Nothing fancy, but you know what is? The taste of these, these taste delicious. My favorite way to eat vegetables, that's why I do it all the time. Let me know how you guys like your vegetables. I'd like to branch out a little bit. But this is my favorite way. Comes out great, 400 degrees in the oven for about 20 minutes or so. Oh, and I flip the potatoes, um, like the cut side down, and they get nice and crispy. That's why my kids love them so much. And they can dip them in, I mean, it's basically like a french fry, you know? All right, so we're starting out with the chicken mixture. You need one cup of Italian seasoned breadcrumbs, or really any breadcrumbs you have, guys. And then one cup of Parmesan cheese. I got the nice kind, not the, I mean, you can use what you have, but I just got the special kind. Eleanor's here helping me out. And I added a little bit of Italian seasoning right there to my mixture. And this is what we're going to dip the chicken in. It's what's going to make it taste so good. And you need six tablespoons of melted butter. If you don't want to use the dairy or if you don't have butter, you can use oil if you want to. I've done it this with oil before. It worked out just fine. Um, and then I'm coating the chicken. Butter into the mixture, into the oiled pan. It's always a joy when my kids can join me in the kitchen and actually help me. <laughs> Wentworth wanted to help with this step. As you can see, his little finger's poking through. But I knew deep down he would just cause a ruckus, okay? I can put up with a lot, but, um, you know, trying to get food in the oven when I'm hungry, it's a lot. So Eleanor came up with a genius idea to pour the <laughs> leftover butter right over the chicken. She's a chef already. Oh, look at that. And she's cleaning. Keep her around. Okay. I threw the chicken in the oven 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. I threw the veggies in first um, so they would have a little bit longer to cook. I'm throwing a salad together. It's like you guys are probably so bored of seeing this salad, but it's my favorite. It's my family's favorite. Super simple. We always have the ingredients. Well, almost always. Cucumbers, romaine lettuce, uh, red onion and feta cheese. Top that off with some Italian seasoning. We use the Olive Garden creamy Italian seasoning. So delicious. Let me know what your guys' favorite salad dish is. Maybe I'll try it out. Don't tell me anything with blue cheese. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> 
<laughs> so here is what the vegetables look like when they're all cooked. Of course, you don't need these vegetables. You can use asparagus. Did I already go over this? I feel like I have. Use, eat what you like. I'm going to eat what I like in my house, in my kitchen. You do the same in yours. Here's the finished product. Everything looked delicious, wonderful. The kids loved it. Look at those crispy potatoes. So good, guys. They're like fries. And if you have leftover, you can put those on a plate in the microwave, put some bacon on top and some cheese. Ooh, bon appetit. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, so there's what it looks like. Nice and delicious. What's up next? Turkey, ground turkey, bean, and mushroom stir fry. Another super simple, easy meal to throw together, but also a crowd pleaser. So you need a third cup of rice wine vinegar. I don't know how much I had. Also a third cup of hoisin sauce. Wow, Kim, that's not a third cup, but we're going to move along. You need a quarter cup of low-sodium soy sauce. I used cocoa aminos. It's soy-free. You also need a third cup of brown sugar. And then mix all that together, and that's going to be your sauce. Guys, do you like hoisin sauce? I learned of this sauce from Wolfgang Puck. He's like the ultimate, right? He's amazing. I am not a fan of this sauce, though, I got to say. When I make the Korean stir fry, whatever that sauce is, I can't remember exactly what it is, but that is divine. I think it's mostly just soy sauce and brown sugar. <laughs> that's probably why I like it so much. Okay, I'm adding some garlic, some... What seasoning was that? Onion, onion seasoning. Because I just was being lazy and didn't feel like cutting up an onion. Also adding salt and pepper. Getting real fancy up in here. And I think that's it. I'm, cu I'm cooking my, I think that was beef. I had ground beef. And then once that's all cooked up, you add some of the sauce in there. It says half. But since I wasn't a huge fan of the flavor, because I'm a true chef and I tasted things as I went, I said, nah, I'm not going to add half. I just added whatever you saw me add. I don't know, a quarter cup. And then <laughs> I don't know why I didn't bring the cutting board to the stove. I took about seven trips to add my green beans. I cooked those for about five minutes until, you know, they weren't crunchy anymore. And then I threw in some mushrooms, just a little bit of oil on the bottom of the pan. Then I'm mixing that all together. Again, super simple recipe, guys. There's not, not much to it. No skill involved at all. And I'm the recipe says to add the rest of the sauce to this meat mixture. Guys, my lord. You know, I know I didn't use measuring cups, but that's a lot of dang sauce. I did not do that. So it says to throw it back on the stove, mix it with the sauce just to heat it through. I was like, man, eh, it's still hot. No big deal. And then I had some rice to serve it on, you know, under it. Good to go. Dinner is served. Bon appetit. <laughs> Bone apple feet, people. Uh, another home run in this house. Everyone liked it, enjoyed it. Did everyone enjoy the mushrooms? No. And maybe next time I'll cut them up a lot smaller so they'll kind of mix into the meat. Just a tip. If, you're, if, if you have someone in your family who doesn't like something, just cut it up real small. Okay, we're moving on to honey baked ham. It's a copycat recipe. I got it from my sister because I really had this homemade green bean casserole recipe without condensed soup. And I thought, well, what can I make with it? Oh, of course, honey baked ham. <laughs> so that's what I did. It's like comfort food right now. That's all I want is just some really good comfort food. Okay, I'm throwing in... Three quarters cup of white sugar. Oh, there's a lot of sugar in this, guys. And apparently a lot of paprika that I just dumped in there. But there is a lot of sugar. You might fall into a coma after you eat this. Much like thanks after Thanksgiving dinner, right? So um, a quarter cup of brown sugar, a quarter teaspoon cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon nutmeg, a quarter teaspoon cloves, quarter teaspoon paprika. I just added what I had and then moved on with my life. And, like, we're moving on to this green bean casserole. So you melt three tablespoons of butter and then and add the diced onion. And then you're supposed to add some parsley. Didn't have that, so I used Italian seasoning. And I'm blanching. This isn't blanching. This is just cooking the green beans, boiling the green beans for a few minutes. I w it, the recipe says five. I did more like ten because these green beans were real tough. You go back to your butter and onion mixture. You add a couple tablespoons of flour, salt, and pepper. Here's the delicious part. Half a cup of milk. Did I use vanilla almond milk? Crap, yeah, I did because I did not have milk. Oh, unless I did. Have some half and half, maybe. <laughs> I don't remember. Use what you have. 
you know, you don't have to get anything fancy. Sour cream up in here, one cup of it. You mix all that in. That's what makes it nice and creamy. So basically, we're making our homemade can of cream of soup. And if you have a cream of soup, just do that. You know what I mean? But I think the fresh green beans really elevate this dish to another level, outer space. Space Cowboy. That NSYNC song just came in my head. If you want to fly. It's so good. Just listen to it on YouTube. Guys, I don't know if that song is appropriate. It definitely doesn't mean what I thought it did when I first listened to it many, many years ago. Okay, back to the recipe. Something PG. Half a cup of shredded cheddar cheese. I threw in some of those French fried onions. The recipe doesn't say to do that, but it's my kitchen. I make my own rules. So I did it. Spread it out in a pan, 350 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes. And then I think I threw on some, oh, more cheese. That's fantastic. And then, you know, toward the end, I threw on some more French fried onions. But that song, going back to it, kind of reminds me of, it gives me like Bruce Willis vibes. You know what I mean? Because they're all like, yippee yay yay Okay, <laughs> moving on. Uh, the ham came out. Sure did. Where's my ham recipe? I don't know where I put it. Oh, here it is. Okay. Uh, what do we do now? Oh, I shred mine up. Shredded. Well, actually, I had Alex do it. I had a lot of sugar left. What a waste. Uh, save it for next time. But it says to use a spiral ham. Clearly, I didn't have that. So you work with what you have. That's the vibe that I'm always telling you guys to do. Work with what you have and, you know, everything is just going to turn out fine. I had some sweet potatoes, some frozen mashed potatoes that I grabbed from my freezer and we had a good old dinner, a good old family dinner and it was very comforting. What's next? (laughs) So we're going to make this chicken pesto and asparagus skillet. Fantastic. Let's do it. First, you need asparagus, unless you don't like asparagus, in which case... I don't know, use some green beans, broccoli, anything you have. You know, I don't think I'm going to buy asparagus again. (laughs) Every time I do, I'm like, "Eh, just, I don't love it as much as I think that I will. I'm also cutting up an onion, going rogue, because it doesn't say to do this in the recipe. Nope, sure doesn't, but I like my onions, so that's what I did. Also, if you don't know how to clean a mushroom, you just take a damp rag, clean that mushroom off, put it, you know, slice it right up. Also with the asparagus to get those woody ends off, you just take it and snap it. And the one part, the tail end is the woody part. And then I just Rachel Ray style cut the rest of them in order, you know? Oh, chicken. I had some chicken, threw it on the stove with some onion, not onion, oil, salt and pepper. I know words because I used hooked on phonics and it worked for me. Oh, sun-dried tomatoes. That's why this recipe was alluring to me because it has a half a cup of sun-dried tomatoes drained, but I just use a spoon and scoop them right out. You guys know if you saw my freezer meal video, I've had those for about seven years and they are still good. Can you believe that? Okay, I dumped all that in a bowl. What am I doing now? Oh, probably cooking the dang asparagus that took, no joke, forever. to. I actually think it's still on my stove cooking right now. That's how long it cooked days, weeks, months even. It is 2022. The pandemic is over. They have found a vaccine. Hallelujah. And we're all at the beach enjoying ourselves. Okay, just kidding. Uh, back, to, <laughs> back to reality. Mushrooms. I threw those in there once the asparagus started to soften up. I said, I can't wait any longer. I'm hungry. So I threw the mushrooms in there. Um, and then, I don't know, what what's after this? I'm trying to look. Oh, I added some broccoli because why not? One cup of broccoli florets, but I probably did more than that. I'm dumping the chicken and uh, sun-dried tomatoes back into the skillet to, quote, warm it all up again. That's not a quote. That's just from my head. And I'm adding some pesto. I can't read the book and watch what I'm doing at the same time. How much pesto? Half a cup of basil pesto. I don't think I added half a cup, but I will say if I do this again, I'll probably leave the basil pesto out. It, I just made everything look weird. Look at that. Kind of looks weird, but it tasted really good. So, And I served it over just some noodles. Um, for my kids, you guys are always asking, how do you get your kids to eat all this? I just separate it for them. Oh, we're moving on. Great. Two. Oh, the recipe fell on the floor. Hold on. Let me grab it. Okay, we've got 20-minute taco salad. We're cutting up, not we, I am cutting up some green bell pepper. Also realizing, whoops, 
Uh, although I did wash it, I always forget to take the tag, the little sticker off of it. That's how you know it's organic. It's got that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, got, I mean, they might be organic. I got them from Costco. Okay, we're trying to add veggies. I'm trying to incorporate, you know, more veggies. That's what this dish is all about. You guys know I like my veggies. Getting my kids to eat them. Sometimes I have to sneak them away. So I snuck them into the ground beef on two days occasion. I just did one green bell pepper and half an onion. I think I end up cutting the whole onion. And I have one pound of beef. That's probably more than a pound. And that's probably why I decided to do the other onion. Uh, because not only did I make a 20 minute taco salad casserole. Did this take 20 minutes? That's just what the recipe says. Uh, that's the title. I also made chimichangas. My my husband's favorite. He asks for them literally every night. I just took some tortillas, cr crushed them, put them on the bottom of a pan. I used the rest of the taco seasoning I had. It definitely wasn't enough, but guess what? It was enough. Good enough. That's what it was because it's all I had. <laughs> and then I added some water to the pan. I do the seasonings first to heat them up, kind of bring them back to life. And then I add the water so everything kind of just soaks into the meat and gives it that nice good flavor and then on top of the crunched tortillas I put the ground beef yes I know it's pronounced tortilla we're just having fun here okay guys you're getting dinner recipes this is not the food network though if you want to call them I'm open to a formal discussion okay I'm also throwing in some beans it's basically it's basically my own recipe now and then you top it with cheese I topped it with way too much cheese the recipe says one cup well it's not too bad. I don't think I used a cup. I may have. Um, then you can top this with sour cream, olives, lettuce if you want, whatever toppings that you like on your, uh, you know, tacos. I'm making chimichangas over here. Oh, and the recipe also says to use refried beans instead of black beans, but I just use black beans because guess what? You guessed it. It's my kitchen. I do what I want. Uh, these are all for the kids. They really like chimichangas. I don't know why. You tell me if you like chimichangas. I like lettuce on my tacos, so I prefer to just eat a taco with a bunch of lettuce. Or better yet, a taco salad. I got sour cream everywhere. Ugh. Not a fan of the sour cream. The casserole, by the way, goes in the oven at... Hmm. <laughs> oh, two to four minutes. Really? Uh, under the broiler I guess that's what I did so there is that I think that's our last recipe oh my gosh look at that guys I did not share a dessert with you this week although we always have Friday brownies we did the plain old boring brownies this time but I will share a recipe with you in a future vlog almond joy brownies oh in my head, they're going to be delicious, but I have not tasted them yet, so I can't guarantee it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching out, watching out, hanging out with me, and watching. I hope you enjoyed your time here as much as I did. I hope you got some great, easy, fast, quick, delicious, simple meal ideas, and I will see you next time. Bye. Happy eating. Eating is delicious. Everyone's doing it. Quarantine 15. I'm definitely gaining it. You guys let me know if you're gaining it too.